team. Good morning. We are here to ask your support for the FIRE program. My name is Jared Diener. I'm Director of Honors Advising and Global Initiatives. I'm Dana Henry, the Coordinator of Student Creative Activities and Research, and a faculty member in the Department of Health Sciences. And I'm Meredith Melbourne Wade, the Director of Fellowships and Awards. FIRE stands for First Year Research Experience. We match first year and new transfer students with experienced faculty mentors to collaborate on a research project. Students are paid for their work. It's a job. And this is really important because it provides an opening to students who also have to work for a living. The FIRE program bridges the gap between financial need and the opportunity to do research. So when you think of research, maybe you think of something like this. This is the mad scientist Doc Brown from the movie Back to the Future. Well, we're not here to build a DeLorean. We're not here to disrupt the space-time continuum. We are here because undergraduate research, at its core, changes lives. It's transformative. Undergraduate research is about building relationships with faculty, encouraging intellectual inquiry, developing problem-solving skills, supporting curiosity, teaching project and time management, encouraging teamwork and collaboration, developing confidence and competence, and enhancing skills for the 21st century workplace. To illustrate the impact of undergraduate research, let's hear from a, a few current and former students who discuss their own experiences. Daquan Nichols is in his second year at JMU. He is on track to graduate a full year early. I mean, he's a double major in biology and independent scholars, and he's planning on attending medical school after graduation. He says, the place I call home is a land of little opportunity. Research offers me an escape. It gives me a greater sense of purpose and presents tangible measures for my own development. The relationship with my faculty mentor is amazing. The way he uplifts me as a scientist and a human being gives me the confidence to succeed in my future endeavors. Alexandra Wilson is a recent alum. She graduated in 2019, majoring in international affairs, and she is currently pursuing a law degree at Seton Hall University. Ali says this, as a first generation college student, completing research with a faculty mentor was more than writing a paper. It was learning how to use my voice. It validated that I belonged in higher education. Despite not being as familiar with college as my classmates, conducting research was evidence that I possessed the same skills as them. My faculty mentor taught me how to believe in my writing and, more importantly, how to believe in myself. Stephen Davick is a non-traditional student. He transferred to JMU a couple of years ago after serving five years in the US Marine Corps. Stephen is a triple major in intelligence analysis, psychology, and anthropology. And he is also, we just found out last week, the 2022 recipient of the Honors Scholar of the Year Award from the Virginia Collegiate Honors Council. We're very proud of his accomplishments. Stephen says, JMU enabled me to conduct applied interdisciplinary research in ways that have significantly impacted me. Through financial support, access to journals and databases, faculty mentors, interdisciplinary labs, and external research opportunities, I have learned the critical skills of research and analysis. This positive experience at JMU has significantly shaped my plans to continue research at the graduate level. So our students tell us that undergraduate research is transformative, but why? We expect students to leave college with certain skills like critical thinking, collaboration, problem solving skills. But in the classroom, there isn't always an opportunity to practice these skills using real world applications. Undergraduate research offers that opportunity, and that's because it's considered a high impact practice or a HIP. And these HIPs allow JMU to fulfill its vision to be the national model for the engaged university. And the positive outcomes from undergraduate research transfer to employer skills. In fact, they're among the top four skills desired by employers. And 81% of employers said that they'd be more likely to hire a student with an undergraduate research experience. At JMU, most research experience opportunities are offered within the academic departments, which is great. 
but it creates accessibility issues for some students. Some departments have more funding, some departments have lower teaching loads, um, other departments are unable to offer paid opportunities to the students. And because of this, not all students have the opportunity to participate in undergraduate research. In particular, we know that first generation and transfer students are much less likely to have these opportunities. They're not as able to develop relationships with faculty. They may not know that these opportunities exist. And if the opportunities are unpaid, they can't afford to volunteer their time to have these research experiences outside of the classroom. And that was certainly the case for me. Uh, when I was dropped off at college by my dad, he gave me $5 for lunch, you know, back when you could actually get lunch for $5. And uh, I had to work to pay for myself to go to school. One semester, a professor announced that he was hiring a student, and I honestly didn't hear the rest of what he said. I just applied for the job because I needed the money. It turned out to be a research experience, and it changed the course of my life, because here I am standing in front of you now as a researcher and a professor, helping other students like me have access to opportunities that can change their lives. Students across JMU's campus face similar barriers, and that's why we are here today asking for your help. Because centralized, campus-wide programming can overcome a lot of these barriers, we are proposing the FIRE program. We are here to ask for as much money as possible, $25,000 <laughs> or more, um, for this program. For each $1,700 we raise, we can create another faculty-student research pair. Through this programming, faculty will work in learning communities to augment their mentorship skills, Students will conduct guided research, and they will conduct regular evaluations, so we have data regarding the effectiveness of the program. This year, we were very lucky to inherit some leftover funds, mainly from programs due to COVID-19 that couldn't reach their capacity. We use those funds to create a short-term pilot program. As you can see from the titles that are popping up on the screen, there's a wide array of projects this year, from financial statements and data analytics to air quality assessment in rural Appalachia. What the screen won't show you, however, is the overwhelming response we received. This was a brand new program. We had an unbelievably short application window. And still 38 faculty asked to be paired, and more than 100 applied more than we could fund. Clearly, there's a demand for this kind of programming at JMU. We need your help for a second iteration of this program, a full semester program. Together, we can change lives at JMU. We can start to meet the demand for this type of programming. We can recruit and retain high achieving students at JMU. And we can help the next generation of Dukes have a stronger connection to their alma mater so that one day they can become alumni donors or be sitting in your chairs. As we move forward with this program, we're very focused on sustainability. How can we keep this moving forward? We're looking for ways to embed research opportunities in current curriculum. We're looking to make partnerships with colleges to work on external grants. And we're looking for ways to partner with local businesses to make the experience even more impactful. As JMU moves into R2 status, and we're recognized for our graduate programming and for our innovation and research, we can't lose sight of our undergrads. There are future business leaders, physicians, analysts, and the FIRE program is one of the ways we can effectively mentor and support these students. Like Dana, I too was a first-gen student whose life was changed through research and mentorship. All three of us have dedicated our careers to helping students advance. We have the skills and the dedication to make this program work, and we're asking you to join us. Thank you so much for your time. <laughs> uh, thank you for the great presentation and where you're headed with the, the project. With what you present is clear, you're gonna to have to continue to have a lot more faculty engaged. How are you, what do you propose to 
make it worthwhile for faculty to be a part of it and how will you mentor them along the way to, to be a part of this program? So one of my areas of expertise is faculty professional development. I worked for our Center for Faculty Innovation for four years. And so part of this program offers professional development opportunities for faculty, which will run through a professional learning community. So faculty will learn the special skills that are necessary to mentor first year students because they come with unique skills. Most students have research opportunities later in their time here when they're already well established. And so it takes special skills to help uh, first generation students, transfer students, and students who are new to JMU. How do students hear about the program? Like how do you reach out to students to make them aware that this is available? So we have partnerships with our first year advising and transfer advising offices. They reached out to all the first year and transfer advisors. So JMU has a unique program where you have a different advisor to help you transition from college or from your community college to JMU. So we partnered with them. They're the ones that advertised it. In addition, we reached out to our research and scholarship liaisons and they advertised it through the departments as well. And that's why we received over 100 applications from students. And when we say short window, they had one week from the time we announced the program to apply, and over 100 students did. So we know that more students would be interested, but because of the short timeline, they couldn't apply. Just to follow up, we, we were worried that we yes. would get enough applicants <laughs> for the money that we had, and that yeah. was clearly not the case. So yeah. um, it, it, our, our communication was effective this year. Yeah. From what you described, it sounds like you have way more student demand than you can currently meet. How are professors going to go about screening, vetting, interviewing to make sure they get the right students in the right projects? I will say that we did that this year. Um, given the really short time frame, we had an application where the faculty submitted first with a project description. It was published. And then students could go in and pick their top three choices. And then we looked at student responses, student experiences, what they hoped to gain, what the faculty member hoped to impart. And we made those matches. One of the things we're learning is that we might not do that moving forward with more time. Um, that we could give faculty a list of students with specific skills listed, what they hoped to gain, and that faculty could help us making, in making that decision. Thank you. We're learning a lot. <laughs> a great, great effort, great presentation, but really impactful uh, project. Um, how do you... He, he's just talking about the student selection piece. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the other side of the yeah. supply. Mm -hmm. how, are we, um, how are we prioritizing the research projects? Because I would assume you have more projects than you can fund. Yes. <laughs> so what's that prioritization process like? So a we looked at a couple of things this semester. We wanted to represent the diversity of disciplines across JMU. So we made sure to select uh, faculty from all the different colleges. The other thing we looked at was their mentorship plans. So we asked the faculty in their application to describe how they would mentor the students differently from the students that enter their labs later in their time. And so we looked to see, did they have specific mentorship plans that paid attention to the fact that these students were gonna come in without as many courses or as much preparation and experience? And so between that combination, we were able to narrow it down, but it was really disappointing to not be able to fund. All of the projects were worthy of funding all of the students were worthy of having these opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing we did is we then shared the interested students' information back to the departments and colleges to say, hey, we have these students who raised their hand and said they're interested. So we wanted to make sure to follow through with those students and give them those opportunities by sharing their information with their permission back to their departments so that hopefully the departments might match our funding and then provide additional opportunities for those students who said they wanted to participate. Uh, pay for all the students so it kind of keeps it equal for all the students? It's $1,200 for the semester. Uh, we did $1,000 for the reduced program this year. You mentioned that you, you, you attempt to have diversity across the curriculum. Uh, most of the examples, and clearly most people think research, they think of the sciences and social sciences, but what, I, uh, what about those that are in creative expression? What kinds of opportunities are there there? We have two recipients this year from the uh, CVPA, uh, Visual and Performing Arts. And I think from the CVPA and the College of Education, we noticed we had the smallest number of applicants overall. 
And so those are areas where we want to recruit further in the future. If we have a second iteration of this program, of course, it's going to be open to, to all colleges, but we want to make sure that they understand that those opportunities are also there for them. Thank you. I have a PhD in English, so I'm here for the humanities. <laughs> <laughs> So do you have a timeline oh, timeline for the number of student matches this year versus next year and how, what's your ultimate kind of goal? Our goal for next year is to advertise in the fall, um, solicit application materials in the fall, and make matches before the end of the fall semester so that students can return in the spring ready to focus a full semester on research. This semester we had to do a lot of that work together um, over the holiday break. And then a lot of those students were starting their research March 1. You, you may have addressed it, but thank you for the presentation. It seems like a terrific uh, thing to support. But is this a stopgap? Are you looking for sustainability? You, mm -hmm. you can go to corporations or other institutions and show that you have success and you'll get grants. The sustainability, if you have 100 applicants and 14 mm -hmm. openings. <laughs> If you do a great job, then that's your thought. This is this is the catalyst. Yeah. And then this yes. You can go to sustainability. Exactly. This is the seed funding, so that we can show the demand and the success. So we're collecting data on the faculty-student pairs regarding their mentorship and how their skills have developed. We can use that data to partner with colleges. So a lot of the grant funding that's available for these types of programs are typically tied to disciplines through things like NSF, NEH, as well as through foundations and like corporate foundations. And so we would partner with faculty or department heads in those departments using the data that we have to apply for longer programs um, that would exist to help train the students in those disciplines. And then the corporate partnerships are really in line with the work that RNS is doing right now. So Research and Scholarship, which is the office that we work in, they're really working hard to expand and develop our corporate relationships. And uh, one great model of this is um, in some colleges, alumni from a particular college like the College of Business might invest in a research opportunity and the students will collect data that support the businesses functioning to help students see that um, you will use data and analysis tools when you work in business. Some business students in particular are rather have high paid internships working at a, co a corporation during the summer instead of doing research. But these programs show them that you need to know how to do research to be successful in your career. Then the corporations that donate that money have a pool of students with research experience that they can draw from for internships in a subsequent semester or hire directly out. So those are the kind of models that we're using to develop corporate relationships and apply for grants. Thank you. And just really quick, is that, is that relationship, that bridge to internship, is that theoretical or is that in practice? So, Right now at JMU, we probably have a few that we're not familiar with. This is an existing program at another institution that I'm familiar with, and so it's a win-win situation for them to financially support undergraduate research, get data for their business, and then basically they're pre-interviewing these students, right, for an internship later. In particular, it really helps a lot of students who get access to internships get access because of their GPA. And so that limits who had, we miss a lot of really wonderful students who maybe struggle with classwork, but who have amazing innovative ideas. And so that's one of the opportunities, ways that we can help students who maybe don't have the strongest GPA show their value to, to companies. All right, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.